That is one of my finds from uh, last night's show. That is a circa 1989 completely die cast Ertl Huey. It is awesome. I got it in a trade for two loose M2 castings. And uh, right after I got it, a guy walked up. I had it sitting on my tub because uh, I wasn't planning on selling it, so it was behind my table. And he's like, how much on the Huey? And I said, I'll take 10 bucks. <laughs> That's the, I don't want to sell the Huey price. So I don't collect diecast helicopters, but come on, that thing is so rad. All right, let's crack some cool stuff here in this video. I've had this just sitting, taking up space, and uh, it's no longer going to do that. The cardboard is going to go where it belongs, and uh, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen are going to come out and breathe. I've never seen one of these loose, so it'll be uh, should be pretty cool to see. I know the basketball hoop pops up. That's pretty cool, I guess. It looks like there's going to be some disassembly, which I'm not going to do on this video but check it out on instagram later i'll take some pics hopefully they'll come out okay and it'll look pretty cool uh, there is your chicago bulls whatever that is casting i don't know what that is called but uh pretty unique pretty cool and to get jordan and pippen is pretty freaking rad those were my the bulls were my team growing up i grew up in denver the nuggets were always pretty bad um so I rooted for the Bulls. I was actually a Bulls fan, just for the record. So you know I'm not a bandwagon fan, because typically I hate dynasties. I hate the Yankees. I hate the Patriots. I was a Bulls fan before they won their first title. In 1989, I became a Bulls fan. And I'm talking diehard. So. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'll take some cool pictures of that for IG. Uh, here's a piece. This is going to be all Hot Wheels except for this one piece. Uh, that Bulls piece was Hot Wheels. This is Ravel. And uh, I don't get a lot of these because these are pretty pricey. Like, they're usually 10 bucks or more. But uh, I found this one for $4. And I'll probably buy a ball every one that I see if it's 4 bucks or less. Because that's pretty cheap compared to what I usually see them selling for. And uh, what do we got here? 60, 1963 Chevy Impala Lowrider. These trunks always do that in the package from my experience. But typically you can get them closed up pretty nice. So that's where you got all your hydros. And you got all your switches up there. And uh, these are not nearly as nice as the Hot Wheels. The Hot Wheels have a pivoting ball. So you can literally articulate the suspension on the Hot Wheels to whatever position you want. With these, it's the entire axle. It either all goes up or it all goes down. With the Hot Wheels, you can put one wheel up, one wheel down. You know, whatever your preference is. Um, so yeah, they got a loose bumper back here. A little bit of super glue will fix that up. But a pretty cool little piece. I like it. The hood doesn't open. The detail's not the greatest. But it is better than uh, a lot of the other stuff that's out there. I really like the wheels on this. They look like gold 100 spoke Dayton's. Just pretty sweet. So... That's an all right, pretty cool car. Something a little bit different. Uh, give you guys all a break from the uh, JNC stuff. My last video, if you caught it, was all Matchbox. Um, it was just all Matchbox. Convoys and uh, semi-trucks. I showed this last night at the end of a video, but a lot of you may not have made it to that point in the video, so I'm going to show this one more time. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, this is a Hot Wheels 100% set. was released in 1997, and it cost $129 from Hot Wheels or Mattel to purchase it. 
in 1997. I still have all the original packaging. I'll show it. Put this up here. It is a Legends, 100% Legends set, four car set. And it is the record breakers or record holders. <clears throat> so uh, I'll start with this 57 Chevy. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I did show them in a video last night. These steel wheels, these little white steelies are some of the nicest looking 1-64 to steelies I've seen. The detail on these is pretty amazing. Some of the best detail I've seen on any Hot Wheels car ever. Uh, the engine is just sick. I mean, it has a radiator hose. You just don't see that kind of stuff in this scale. So it is extremely well done. Um, not really my flavor, but uh, I traded a green machine for this set. And I think... For now, th these will stay in the box, but at some point they may come out for display. And then uh, here's a little Willie's Gasser. This one's pretty nice, too. Really nice detail on these cars. Opening hood. So there's your Gasser. And then here's the uh, Challenger 1 which Mickey Thompson drove to uh, break the land speed record. And this thing is heavy. It's a heavy chunk of die cast. Got the four engines in there. This would be a nice one to chop up if you wanted to do a custom. I'm not real sure where the driver sat. I guess he would sit back here. But listen to this. It's just metal on metal. Rubber tires. Well, I don't know if the canopy comes off or not. Oh yeah, it doesn't come off, but wow, I didn't even notice that. So there's where your driver would sit. That's where Mickey Thompson would sit to break the record. So that is pretty cool. This is a really nice set, actually. I'm not into this kind of stuff, typically. It's just typically not my thing. But this car right here is the reason that I wanted it, because uh, this is the uh, Watson Roadster. And when I saw this, I, I don't know, I thought this thing was just rad. And I don't know why, you know, it's not my, it's not my thing. It's not what I collect. It's not what I'm typically drawn to. But for some reason, this one spoke to me. And uh, he obviously, he wasn't going to break up the set. But I think I did really well on it because I, I know I could sell this for more than what I could sell that green machine for. If I ever decided, which at this point, I am not going to be selling this set. Awesome little car. So, and it came with... Uh, an acrylic display case which I think I might find a night another good use for that acrylic display case so there's that set and then now we're gonna crack open some Hot Wheels um, I got an REOK box this week from I don't know if, if he wants me saying his last name his name is Chris super cool guy he just DM me on Instagram um, I've made it known in my videos that I'm chipping away at the retro entertainment set and he PM or DM'd me some pics and uh, he's like, I, I'm just going to send these to you. So that was really cool of him. Uh, but before I get into the retros and there's only four of those, I want to crack this open. This is another car that I picked up last night at the local Hot Wheels meet. And uh, the card has a dinged corner. I wish I would have known that last night. I would have talked him down on the price. I don't know what these go for, but it's funny at the, this local meet. And I know a lot of you guys watch my channel, but it's just so funny because 
everybody wants top dollar for their cars, but they don't want to pay you. They don't want to pay you even retail for what you're trying to sell. That's just so funny. All right, let's uh, crack open a super because they don't belong in the packaging, especially this one. This is a super that's been having a lot of pain issues, very reminiscent of the 2007 year with uh, paint flaking. So if you have this casting, check your packaging, check inside of your packaging to see if you have any flaking going on. Very big issue with this super. Um, wow, the paint is pretty phenomenal actually. The camera's not gonna do it any justice. That is pretty amazing looking paint. Really, really nice paint job on that. So I'm not a big super guy, but I will get all of the uh, entertainment supers, except for the Batmobile. Um, obviously, I have the TV series Batmobile. That, that's an iconic car. But this new Batmobile that's coming out, I couldn't care less if I get that one or not. If I find it in the store, I'll throw it into my collection. If not, I'll, I'll never own it. But if the Ecto or the Time Machine ever come out as a Super, I will go to great lengths to acquire those. So that's a pretty cool addition to the uh, Super Treasure Hunt collection, which mine is not all that big. So now we're going to crack open some retros that I do not have. Starting with this uh, James Bond Lotus Esprit. This is the underwater oh, it's weird because all of these cards say oh oh they this one doesn't typically they say metal on metal real rider tires this one is metal on metal but it is not real rider tires they are plastic little plastic tires but that's all right. These little, little like little fins that help you keep control of the vehicle while it is submerged. So interesting little car, but I need it for the collection. So I picked it up as a, are you okay? Can't say no to free, right? This next one, <clears throat> is from 2013. I don't know how much this one goes for, but I know the Viper is one of the more pricey retros. And uh, I'm really like, these are the ones that kind of bug me. The only reason I get them is because I'm going for the set. If it wasn't for that, I would never, uh, never really care to acquire these ones because they're not Hot Wheels. There's not even any wheels on it. But they do come with a little stand. So that's cool. This is really heavy. It just, it's like straight up all die cast. The wings do not... They do not uh, fold. like They look like they do, but they definitely don't. Um, it is, it looks to be a few different, well, we got one. Okay, so it is two separate pieces. So this entire top part is all one, one piece, one cast. And then the, this bottom part here is a separate casting that they obviously attach. And then you have some plastic attachments. But there, this is really heavy. There's a lot of metal in this, in this piece. So got the little stand for it here. I'll just set that right there. And uh, now we got two more. These are both cars actually both cars that I actually like from Zoolander the 67 Ford Bronco I do have the green light version of this which 
obviously with green light, you're looking at a much more detailed, higher quality piece, but I really do like this Bronco from Hot Wheels, especially with the uh, metal, bo metal body, metal base, and real rider tires. So a pretty cool little piece by Hot Wheels standards. Got the New York license plate. Roll bar looks to be a little bit crooked, but that I've had a few of these and I think that's the case in every one I've ever had. But you do have headlight detail indicators. A nice, uh, pretty decent paint job. The windshield looks pretty cheap, but you know, it's a Hot Wheels, so it's kind of to be expected. But you do have a nice metal base and you've got the nice off-road tires. So pretty cool. I'm glad to get that back into the collection where it belongs. And then this last one is a retro that I have never owned in all of my days collecting. This is from 2013 from Beverly Hills Cop 2. I have the, uh, the weathered Chevelle from Beverly Hills Cop. I do not have the 68 Cutlass, which I do now. I'll have to count, I'll have to check these off my checklist that I made and I think this puts me now like 25 away from the set, counting the new Halos. But the new Fast and Furious are coming out and wow, those are going to fly off the shelf. Those aren't even going to make it to the peg. I don't know if you guys have seen those, but that R34 Skyline is, it is stupid. Those are going to be very, very hard to find. I'm probably just going to order a couple cases of those. Or actually, I'll probably just order a case. Because I just need a loose set and uh, a carded Skyline. So there you go. 68 Oldsmobile Cutlass. Nice little piece there. So some nice new additions for the Retro Entertainment Collection. As well as a nice addition to the Super Treasure Hunt collection. And a pretty cool Huey helicopter. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I might put it up on eBay. They are pretty tough to find on eBay. I was just looking. You can get them. I think it came as a little kit that you had to put together. But it's really heavy. It's like almost all die cast. And uh, I don't know. I'm sure I could probably get 15 or 20 bucks for it, which I could then use to purchase more Kyosho or TLV or Konami. So I've uh, been working on getting the table cleared off. It's definitely a lot better. But uh, now that I'm done making videos for the day, I can really get at it and get it prepped up because I got some awesome stuff that's supposed to show up tomorrow or Tuesday and I'm going to need the uh, diorama to make some more videos. So thanks for checking it out. Have a good rest of your weekend and I will holler at the next video.